Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's session that will overview the new enhancements to both the UIIA and the street interchange applications. My name is Debbie Sasko, and I'm the AVP of Information Services at IANA, and I also have Stacey Fagan with me today, who is our program manager. So let's get started first by giving a brief overview of the new features, and then what I'll do is go into the actual application and take a more detailed look at each functionality. So we have two new UIA enhancements that we developed at the request of the Intermodal Interchange Executive Committee, which is the group that oversees the administration of the agreement. The first enhancement is the ability to provide a method for equipment providers to notify motor carriers of outstanding interchanged equipment. So what this will allow the EP to do is to simply upload an Excel file that identifies equipment that has not been returned by a specific motor carrier. What our system will do is when we get that uh, uploaded file from the provider, we will generate an email to the motor carrier with the Excel file attachment that you sent and uploaded. And it will have in the body of the message that the motor carrier, if they have any questions in regards to the outstanding interchange equipment, that they would need to contact the equipment provider. And that contact would be the main UIA contact for your company unless you have designated a specific contact to handle outstanding interchange questions. The benefit of this new feature for motor carriers, of course, is to make them aware that equipment uh, that is out under their SCAT code is still on your books, is not being returned, so hopefully it will help prevent any unnecessary per diem billing. And from the EP's perspective, it provides an efficient method for you to notify motor carriers of equipment that hasn't been returned to you. Our understanding is that there are some providers that have processes in place now that they uh, use to do that. But this provides an additional method for those that already have a process that they would elect to use this feature. Or for those that don't have a process in place, this provides a simple way for you to uh, provide that information to the motor carrier. Again, this feature is not mandatory for equipment providers to use. It's just an option available to you as a participant in the agreement. The second new feature uh, that we've added is the ability for motor carriers to add additional contacts within their UIA account. These contacts would be just for uh, visibility reasons and to allow them to direct UIIA notifications to specific individuals. So the motor carrier will have the ability to route notices that come from the UIA system to the appropriate contact within their organization. Uh, right now, our system is set up to send all notifications to the master UIA contact, and also they have the ability to have a secondary email address on file with us. So this new feature will allow them to expand that uh, to indicate individuals within their organization, such as if they have a, a certain person that handles per diem billing or M&R billing, uh, that they would want, say, notices from our office to go to, to that specific individual, as well as the master contact, they'll be able to do that. This information will be visible to you as an equipment provider when you do a motor carrier lookup within the app application. And for any equipment providers that actually get an EDI feed from us where they have the uh, UI motor carrier status information sent electronically, you'd be able to have your EDI modified should you elect to do so to include the additional motor carrier contact information if it has been provided by an actual motor carrier. Please note that the UI agreement still has the provision that all notifications must be sent to the UI subscriber on record. So this information is being, would be made available to you as information should you elect to say you have a, a UI matter that you need to speak to someone within a motor carrier's company regarding an M&R problem or a safety issue. You would be able to have that visibility to see if they had a specific individual within their organization that handled those particular types of matters. So with that, uh, what I'd like to do is actually take you within the UI application so that we can take a look at these features. This is our test system. So I'm logged in right now as a test uh, equipment provider. So the new outstanding interchange notification feature will be the last link uh, on your navigation bar once you log into the application. So if you click that, you'll be taken to a screen that gives you two options. One. It'll allow you to upload a file for multiple motor carriers. So you could have an Excel file where the first column is the SCAT code 
of the actual motor carriers you're wanting to provide the information to. And then we have suggested um, other fields be included in the file just to provide the specific information that the motor carrier would need to uh, know about the outstanding equipment. So here's an example of a file uh, where you would have the SCAT code and if you were, if you wanted to upload a file with multiple SCACs, you could do that. Like if it, it was for multiple companies, you just need to have those SCAC codes showing in this first column. And then we suggest that you also include the alphanumeric equipment ID, uh, what date the equipment was outdated, the location, uh, the booking number, and the number of days the equipment was uh, out under the motor carrier's interchange. And these are just uh, suggestions. Uh, your file can include additional information. It may not include all these fields. The only field you need to make sure you include is this first field with the SCAT code in it if you're going to be uploading a one Excel file that contains outstanding interchange equipment for multiple companies. Um, so we won't be doing any type of validation on the, the information within the file other than looking to see if this column here has multiple SCAT codes in it. So you would be able to have the ability to do that single file for multiple companies or you'd be able to upload one file for a specific motor carrier. And if you choose to do that, the file naming convention that we ask you to use would be the date of the motor carrier stack. And you have the ability, if you're uploading single files, you can do up to five files at a time. So uh, I'll just do an example here of a file uh, to upload a file. You click on whatever file you were going to be uploading. And then if you wanted to upload more files, you could click this feature. And then it would allow you to choose additional files you would want to upload. So say I have another file that I want to upload, I could click that. And then basically when I'm done, then I would just click this Upload button. It's going to tell you that the files were uploaded successfully and the notification will be sent to the motor carrier soon. Um, what the type of email the motor carrier will get, here's a sample of it. It basically just tells them that the attached Excel file is notifying your company of outstanding interchange equipment. If they have any questions, they need to contact this uh, individual within your organization. So they would receive this email along with the Excel file attachment anytime you would upload or use this feature uh, within the application. You would also have the ability to view any uploaded files for historical purposes. So if you click here, it would show you a list of all the files you had uploaded as an equipment provider, um, as well as showing you the dates that they were uploaded and if the notification had been sent to the motor carrier. So basically, this just gives you a, another mechanism to notify motor carriers of outstanding interchange equipment with a simple Excel upload. Um, if we go to the uh, second feature, which was the additional name function, contact functionality for the motor carrier, I'll bring up a motor carrier account. Um, they will have a screen like this where they can add a new uh, contact for their company. If they click New, there's going to be uh, various contact types that they can select from. They have a primary contact, a safety, a per diem, maintenance and repair, interchange suspension contact, IDD, dispatch contact for equipment termination, and president, owner, general manager, legal or outstanding interchange equipment contact. And this last one is related to the new feature that we've made available for the equipment providers. So if I wanted to add a new contact, say for IDD, which is our intermodal driver database, I would just simply select that type of contact. I key the contact name and their email address. And then I would select, being the motor carrier, I would select what type of notices they want that individual to receive a copy of. And we've actually categorized all the UII notifications as uh, you can see at the bottom here. So we have UIA general notices, which are revisions to the UIA and general information about, the UIA, about their UIA account. Uh, UIA billing notices, where that would be the annual billing that we send to the motor carrier. Insurance notifications, anything related to any insurance information we have on file for them. Uh, EP addenda revisions, anytime we do an addenda revision for any of the equipment providers, that has to go out to all motor carriers. 
So there may be someone within the motor carrier's organization that they would want to receive that type of notice. EP cancellation notices. Uh, that, this is related to the courtesy notice that we send out from our system. This is not the three-day notice, the no less than three-day business notice that you are required as an equipment provider to provide the motor carrier. So basically, if, if an equipment provider comes into our system, suspends the motor carrier's interchange for a specific monetary reason or any other reason, our system then sends a courtesy email out to that motor carrier letting them know that you've canceled their interchange. Equipment return notifications are any of the equipment providers that maintain their satellite return locations within our equipment return location directory. If there are any uh, changes to that, we are required to give the motor carrier 14-day notice of those changes. So anytime we send those types of notices out, uh, if they wanted a specific individual to get that or receive a copy of that, they could indicate that they want them to receive that note, type of notice. IDV notices are our driver, uh, intermodal driver database notice notifications. And the last uh, category is the outstanding interchange equipment, which would be generated based on an equipment provider using the new feature we just walked through. So in this particular example, if I select the type of notices they get, I click Save. It would add that contact to the list. They'd have the ability to edit or delete a contact should they need to do so. Um, and then from the equipment provider side, I'll show you how it would look if you had a company that had added contacts, what you would see as an equipment provider. If you did a motor carrier lookup of the, of the motor carrier, you'll see here the UIA contact information. So you would see a link, a new link that says motor carrier additional contacts. You'd be able to click on that see all the contacts listed for that specific motor carrier should they have submitted new contacts in this location under this new feature. So you'd be able to see any contacts. So say, for example, you had a per diem matter that you were trying to resolve with the motor carrier. You could see that there was a specific contact that they had for per diem. So it would allow you to have that uh, email address of that person if you would want to contact them directly. The button at the bottom here will then take you back to the motor carrier details screen so that you don't lose your place within the application. So those are the two new features within the UIA application. Uh, these features will be deployed uh, in production on Monday, February 13th, and they'll be available for uh, users to use at that time. So with that, what I'd like to do is go back to the PowerPoint presentation, and we'll go into the uh, street interchange application enhancements that we have uh, are going to be introducing on the same day, on February 13th, for users uh, that use our street interchange application. Uh, just for those that are not using our street interchange application, some of the benefits of the application are that it establishes a quick, efficient uh, communication method between motor carriers and equipment providers to facilitate a street interchange or street term, uh, transaction. Uh, it's a value-added benefit of UIA participation, so there's no additional charge for equipment providers or motor carriers to use the uh, application. Uh, we actually provide an automatic validation to confirm when there's two motor carriers involved in the street interchange uh, transaction. We confirm that motor carrier B has a valid interchange with the equipment provider that's involved in the transaction before we would send that transaction to you for approval. Uh, the application also provides an electronic means of capturing the transfer of liability, damage, and indemnification that parties have under the UIA agreement when it transfers from motor carrier A to motor carrier B. So there's a record there that you would be able to go back to and for reference should you need to for any type of per diem matter or damage or uh, maintenance and repair to see when that transfer actually took place from motor carrier A to motor carrier B. And if the application is being used for a street turn where it's uh, the same motor carrier wanting to use an import for an export move, there'd be a record of when that clock should have stopped on the import and started on the export. Um, and it also, as the last bullet uh, indicates, it provides you as the equipment provider the ability to look back for supporting documentation so that you can properly allocate 
your per diem and uh, free time based on the terms contained in your UI addenda, as well as any maintenance and repair charges that may be incurred. So the enhancements that we've added, um, Mediterranean Shipping has been using our street interchange application uh, since September of 2016. So based on some feedback that we've received from them, as well as motor carriers uh, that uh, have been using the transaction, we've probably generated close to 40 to 50,000 transactions for Mediterranean Shipping since September. So they came back and had a few items that they would want us to uh, wanted us to take a look at to see if we could implement for them to make the user's experience a little uh, more efficient. One of those items is what we've introduced now. It's called a new quick street turn feature. And what we've done is we found out that for a street turn, when the same motor carrier wants to use an import for an export move, the, all of the fields that were being requested for a street interchange were not necessary. So what we did is we streamlined a screen uh, that allows the motor carrier just to provide specific information and then allows that street turn request uh, hopefully to uh, flow a little quicker through the system as far as getting the information from the motor carrier and transmitting that information to the equipment provider for approval or rejection. The second item uh, you see is the ability for a new edit, cancel, and reinitiate functionality uh, that we'll be introducing. And that was a request that uh, was based off of sometimes the motor carrier may submit a request for the street interchange and maybe something on the request might have changed, maybe the booking number, maybe they entered the wrong um, location or booking number or container number, so they would want to edit that information. So as long as the transaction is pending, they will now have the ability to edit, cancel the transaction, and the reinitiate functionality allows them to um, actually reinitiate either a canceled or a pending transaction where they may have a similar transaction that they don't want to have to rekey all the information. This allows that information to be pre-populated in a new transaction and allows them to edit what they need to edit and then submit that uh, new transaction. The uh, third bullet, uh, multiple containers under a single request. We had a request that sometimes motor carriers uh, have a request where they want to, under a single street turn request, they want to list multiple containers. So we provided that, that ability as well. And one of the process procedures within the guidelines of the street interchange application is that all transactions stay in a pending status for 24 hours. And if no action is taken on that uh, transaction within that time frame, the system will automatically reject the transaction. So what we did is uh, we had a request that sometimes on Fridays, if a transaction is received late in the day, uh, the equipment provider may not have time to get to it uh, to approve it or reject it, or they may have to research something before they can respond. So what we did is on Friday, any transactions after 2 p.m., that 24-hour clock will not start until the following Monday at 7 a.m. That allows um, more time for the parties to uh, respond to this, the transaction without it having been rejected. Uh, should Monday be a holiday, uh, a, a federal holiday, then the 24-hour clock would start that Tuesday at 7 a.m. We'll go ahead now and take a look at the street interchange application. Again, this is our test system. So to show you the new features, I'm going to go in as an the motor carrier first, and then I will go in as an equipment provider to show you what uh, you would see from that perspective. Um, you can see here we have a new uh, quick street turn uh, functionality that I just talked about, and this is only for when a single motor carrier involving one motor carrier company wants to reuse an import for an export move. We've allowed them to click on this feature here, and we've also added the new icon up here that will allow them to initiate the new feature as well. If they click on this, they'll get a screen where their name, their company name and SCAC will be pre-populated. So then all they'll need to give us is the equipment provider's name. It'll pre-populate your SCAT code in there. Uh, they'll have to enter the container number that they want to do the transaction for. The export booking number is mandatory. The import booking number is not, but that can be provided. If they wanted to do multiple uh, containers under the one request, they would simply click Add. 
And then what it does is it takes the information they had previously entered and puts it down here and allows them to then enter another transaction, another container. Um, if they had a chassis information, they would enter it here. If they don't have a chassis, it will information it will uh, default to this if it's a motor carrier provided chassis, which is the ZZZ and all nine. The location, uh, what we found from the equipment providers that we have talked to, um, that the originating location is the, the information that they're really interested in on a street term. Uh, and they wanted the ability to limit the locations that a, provide, that a motor carrier would have the ability to enter here to avoid any type of just kind of nonsense information being put in this field. So what we did is we made a feature that will allow the equipment provider to provide us with a list of their locations. So based on the equipment provider that's been entered here, our system would look for that list and here's a list of their locations, and the motor carrier would be able to select either from the location name or the IANA code. They'd be, have the ability to search for a location. If they search for MAR, they could click here. It would pop that information in here for them. They also, without clicking on a list, they can also key in MAR, and it would come up MAR terminal and allow them to select it that way, or they can key in the zip code. But this makes this much cleaner than uh, allowing them just to key any type of information in there. So at that, they would click Next. It comes up to a confirmation screen where they look to make sure all the information they've entered is correct. They can edit it if it's not. They have the ability to go back and edit it, or they can confirm that it is correct. If it is, they click OK. And at that point in the, in the process, that transaction is then sent to the equipment providers involved for approval. From the motor carrier's perspective, that becomes one of their pending transactions. So they can go here and they can see all of these transactions are pending. However, if they had any transactions that they were to take action on, they would not be shaded. And I'll show you that when I log in uh, from the equipment provider side. I'll show you how those transactions look on that side. But for now, we're back to the pending transactions, and we'll go into one of these. And you can see that the system shows the flow at the top. So this shows it was initiated by this motor carrier. It's going to the equipment provider, because this is a street turn request, where it's one motor carrier wanting to use an import for an export. So it shows it's waiting for the equipment provider's approval. Once the equipment provider approves the transaction, the system would automatically show these as green as well because it would automatically approve the street turn. And then there would be a record in our system that would show that on this date and this time, this unit turned from an import to be used for an export for this equipment provider. The motor carrier has the ability, as I indicated, we've added the new functionalities to allow them to edit cancel or reinitiate a pending request. So if they wanted to go in here, say they needed to fix the booking number on this particular uh, request, they could go in and change the booking number, click Next, Confirm, OK, and then the request, the revised request would go to the uh, equipment provider showing the correct booking number. They would also have the ability under a pending request to cancel the request. Say, for example, they submitted the request and then all of a sudden they said, well, I don't want to do this. So they can cancel that request, click OK, and then it shows that the request was canceled by the motor carrier. Uh, so there's a record that they had submitted a request, but they canceled it. Then say they want to come back later on and reinitiate that same request, they'd be able to click the reinitiate request button. Uh, you can see that the container information is shown down here. So if everything's the same, they really don't need to do anything other than click Next and Confirm. If there was things that they needed to change, they'd have the ability to do that edit before they submitted uh, the request to the equipment provider. So now I'm going to log in as an equipment provider so that you can see from their perspective what you would see as a uh, provider. Okay, so on the equipment provider side, uh, you'll see these pending transactions. So you can see that none of these are shaded. So that means that these are waiting for this equipment provider's action to take some type of action on. 
So if they go here, they have the ability to search if they want to search for a particular container, if they want to search for a particular motor carrier stack, whatever they want to search by, they have these uh, search parameters here to be able to do that. So if I went into one of the transactions, I can see here that it's waiting for my approval as the equipment provider. So I have the ability to approve that transaction. I can edit the transaction or I can reject the transaction or I can reinitiate the request. So for this particular example, let's approve the transaction. Click OK. And at that point, you'll see that the system changes everything green, meaning that the transaction is completed, it's captured in the system as being completed, and at this point in time, this particular street turn is when the import should have gone to an export move. Now, if I wanted to go back and say I wanted to uh, go into another transaction and I wanted to uh, reject the transaction for some reason, I could click Reject and it's going to ask me to provide a reason. So anytime I reject a transaction, I have to provide a reason. So just maybe this equipment wasn't eligible um, for street interchange. And then I would click uh, reject. And then it's going to say OK. And then it's going to show that med shipping rejected this um, particular transaction and the reason it was because the equipment cannot be street turned. Um, so we can close that. Um, other features available uh, on the, the screen here, you have the ability to download a PDF of the, of the transaction. So it'll show um, all of the particulars about the transaction, all the information that was keyed in, the originating location. Uh, what happened with the transaction and who it's waiting for approval from. The other item that we've added, uh, new functionality, is the search request. We have now the ability to search by street interchange, which in our system is defined as involving two different motor carriers versus one doing an import for an export move. So if I clicked on street interchange, it would return those transactions that involve two motor carriers versus one motor carrier. So if you go in here, you would see in this transaction, this particular transaction also has a chassis provider. So it, start, it was initiated by motor carrier B. It's waiting for the container provider's approval. Then it will go wait for the chassis provider's approval. It will go back to motor carrier B for their pre-trip walk around inspection information, and then as long as they do not indicate any issues on the pre-trip, the system would automatically approve the transaction. If there were issues indicated, it would then go to Motor Carrier B for final OK because they have to agree with whatever uh, B has indicated the condition of the equipment is at the time they take possession. So if I just approve this transaction, you can see then it goes to the next one in line for approval. So as this goes along, though, this party would be notified that it was waiting for your approval, so you would know you were in line to take some type of action on this transaction. There's also the ability to receive this information via EDI or XML. So if an equipment provider would want to use the system and receive information uh, versus using the portal, if they would want to receive the request for street turns or street interchanges via EDI or XML, and then also receive a request once that uh, was approved, you'd be able to do so via, uh, we have schemas for both our EDI and XML that we would provide you and work with your IT people to uh, test that out and get it set up before you were using the application. Uh, again, the street interchange application is available available to UIA equipment provider participants as well as motor carrier participants at no additional cost. Um, any equipment provider that would be interested in using this system just needs to reach out to our office. You can contact me directly and then uh, we'll determine how we can get you set up in the system and then what we would do is send a notification out to motor carriers advising them that uh, your company has elected to use the street interchange application for all street turns and street interchange uh, requests. Um, 
So with that, those are the new functionalities that we've added to the application. That was the purpose of today's webinar. However, for any of you that are not currently using the Street Interchange application and you would like to take a more deeper dive as in regards to a demo of the application, we're holding another webinar on March 7th that I'm going to be sending out uh, invitations to. So certainly um, keep a lookout for that. And if you're interested in taking a deeper dive into the details uh, screenshots of the uh, application, how it works, and the various other screens that we didn't cover today. Uh, that seventh webinar will do that for you. So with that, Stacey, do we have any questions from anyone? I do have a couple. Okay. Um, on the enhancement regarding the outstanding interchanged equipment, are EPs required to use the feature? No. EPs were not required to use the uh, new functions that we've added within the UI application. We simply provided them as an additional method for those that may not have a process in place today because our, our, the concern from motor carriers that we heard were that there were some equipment providers that did not provide notice when there was outstanding interchanged equipment and there were some providers that didn't have a process in place, so we wanted to provide the ability for you to have a process should you want to use it. How often will EPs that use the feature send out notices? The, the outstanding interchange equipment feature, as far as how often you would need to upload files, would be dependent on your own processes. So, and, you know, if you wanted to do it once a month, if you wanted to do it once a week, it would be up to you as far as the frequency you would upload that information. It may be that you upload it at various times depending uh, within the month, depending on the number of motor carriers you have with outstanding equipment. Whatever your process would be and whatever you select it would be how you would use the function. Is there the ability for EPs to add additional contacts if there was a specific person for the outstanding equipment that they would want that person, the motor carriers, to contact? Yes, I believe um, the, the application allows for equipment providers to add other um, contacts. So you have an add other contact feature as well. So you'd be able to go in here and type in a contact, the type of contact you would enter as outstanding interchange equipment contact, you put their information. And what our system will do is when we send those outstanding equipment interchange notices out, we will look to see if there's an outstanding interchange equipment contact here. If there is one, we will use that contact. If there is none, then we will go to the main contact under account information. Okay. If an EP receives information from the UIIA electronically, can they opt to receive the additional motor carrier contact information on their feeds as well? Yes. Any, any equipment provider that's currently getting data under the UIA via uh, electronic data feed or XML uh, would have the ability, should they elect to do so, um, to modify that feed uh, to receive the additional motor carrier contact information. If, if interested in, in doing so, uh, you would just need to contact our office and then we would tell you how, how long it would take for us to do that programming change for you. Regarding the street interchange application, if we're interested in learning more about the program, who do we contact and what is the cost? Uh, as I had indicated uh, during the webinar, uh, the cost to use the street interchange application, there is none. It's a value-added benefit of your UIA participation. If you're interested in finding out more information, uh, there is on our website, if you go to our home page on our website, there is a user guide for equipment providers on the home page. Uh, however, if you have additional questions, you can always contact me. Um, my contact information is in the PowerPoint. Uh, I believe we have the general email address here, but I think most of you know my contact information. But if you don't, uh, my email address is debbie.sasco at intermodal.org or you can reach me at 301-982-3400, extension 352. Last question. Okay. Can a motor carrier use the canceled, edit, or reinitiate features on an approved street interchange request? The edit and canceled features 
cannot be used on an approved request. They can use the reinitiate feature on approved requests because they may have a similar request where they don't want to rekey everything. So they may take our approved request, reinitiate it, and then just make the changes for the information that's different. But the edit and cancel uh, button and functionalities are strictly for pending transactions. Is that all we have, Steve? That's it.